Hi, this is Salvatore Pavonis, and I'm excited to tell you about my latest article on Forbes. This is an article on China's 2017 provincial GDP statistics, which were quietly released Monday, February 12th, with no fanfare, as far as I can tell. No news organization even noticed they were out. Uh, but I noticed, and I quickly wrote up the statistics for Forbes. You can find this article on my Forbes site or the Forbes uh, Asia site. And if you have a look at it, you'll find that I've broken down China's GDP per capita and real GDP growth rate figures for 2017 by province. This is the first provincial level analysis available anywhere in English. Um, the interesting number is down here at the bottom right where if you add up all of China's province's GDP statistics, you find an 8.1% growth rate for China for 2017. But if you look at the data uh, given for the country as a whole, it's only a 6.9% growth rate. So the provinces are overstating their growth rates, as historically they have. Also, if you add up the provincial numbers for GDP per capita, you get a GDP per capita of China of $9,794 converted into US dollars versus $9,311 uh, based on the national data. Now, that's no surprise. For several years, China's uh, provincial GDP statistics have uh, overstated the national figure, and the country has uh, made a commitment to bringing those back into line over the next few years. Here, you can see I've also produced a map of uh, GDP growth rates by province. And the interesting thing here are two of the standout provinces in uh, the western fringe of eastern China. And that is uh, Guizhou province, uh, kind of in the backyard of Guangdong, uh, and Shanxi province, uh, uh, kind of in the backyard of Beijing. Uh, these two provinces are the only two to grow at greater than 12%. Now, even if those statistics are not quite true, it does show some of the western Chinese regions growing at faster rates than the eastern coastal cities. Of course, other far western Chinese regions uh, like Gansu and Qinghai are growing much more slowly. Um, notice also that Inner Mongolia has a negative 15% growth rate. And that's not a real number. That's because it restated its GDP statistics uh, due to accounting irregularities uh, in, the past, in past years. Also note the extremely slow growth rates in the Dongbei region of northeastern China. That's uh, Liaoning province, Jilin province, and Heilongjiang province. Uh, North Korea is over here and uh, Russia is here. So these are the provinces that border North Korea and Russia. And no surprise that with neighbors like that, they have very little opportunity for cross-border trade and for growing by uh, connecting to value chains in neighboring countries. Uh, the fast growth continues to be in Eastern China, where in fact the fastest, oh, I'm sorry, the richest provinces in China are. So these are the China's provinces by GDP per capita. And you can see the richest places in China are uh, Beijing and Tianshan in, uh, in the capital region of China, surrounded by the much poorer uh, uh, Hubei province. Uh, also the area around Shanghai, the Yangtze River Delta, and the Pearl River Delta, Guangdong province near Hong Kong. So these three regions, uh, Pearl River Delta, Yangtze River Delta, and now we're starting to call it Jingjinji uh, around the capital region. These three areas are by far the richest areas of China and continue to outpace the rest of China. They're, they're, they're growing at e either a similar rate or a faster rate uh, to the country as a whole. Now, the overall conclusion I think you can take away from this article is that as GDP growth slows in China, it's becoming more and more difficult for those Western provinces to catch up to the East. Uh, you know, Eastern China is already at a level of GDP per capita that's somewhat similar to that of Taiwan or South Korea or poorer areas of Japan. Uh, but 
Western China is not catching up to those leading Eastern provinces. And that's a real problem. Uh, we're starting to see the emergence of two Chinas, a, a set of Eastern provinces that are closely integrated into the world economy and Northern and Western provinces that are really left behind. Now, if you'd like to uh, see more of my writing about uh, the Asia Pacific and the world in general, you can go to my website at salvatorbabonis.com, where you can also sign up for my Global Asia newsletter. It's free, it comes out about once a month, and it contains a summary of my writing. Of course, right now you're on my YouTube channel, and I would love for you uh, to subscribe to my YouTube channel, where you can also get my weekly uh, live stream show, Midnight in America. Hope you'll subscribe and thanks for listening.